Good afternoon. My name is James Swanson, the Global Product Training Manager with Hoffman. Today I'd like to talk to you about thermal audits. The first thing you need when you do a thermal audit is permission. You need permission from the electrical maintenance manager and permission from the electrician who's going to be assisting you. Remember, this is not something you do on your own. When you do a thermal audit on a cabinet, the first thing you have to do is you have to get the dimensions of the cabinet. So you'll always need your tape measure. So with the tape measure, you will measure the depth of the cabinet, the width of the cabinet, and the height of the cabinet. When we look at the enclosure, we need to look at the surroundings of the enclosure and find out if there are any surfaces that are not allowing heat transfer. In this case here, you can see that the top is open, the bottom is open, both sides are open, the front is open, and in the back, there's clearance in the back as well, so the back is open for heat transfer. What you cannot see is that there is an air path behind this cabinet where air can come through and heat transfer will take place. When doing a thermal audit, always note whether or not there is an air conditioner already existing on the cabinet. If there is an air conditioner that's not functioning, simply by taking down the model number and the serial number of the air conditioner, you can provide a replacement. If the other fan or air conditioner are working and are not giving adequate cooling, there may have been something changed inside the cabinet. Perhaps they've upgraded a drive. Perhaps they've added some more equipment. One way or another, you still may have need for more cooling. By using your temperature taking device to gauge the temperature on the floor around the enclosure, you can get the sunk temperature. So the temperature of the air that is around the enclosure for purposes of understanding what the temperature is in that area. If your electrician is unable to open up the enclosure for some reason, please understand that you can take the temperature where the doors come together near the top on most type 12 cabinets. In this place here, this is where the heat will be escaping. It will be escaping through the skin of the cabinet and also up here. This is going to be the hottest spot. It's going to give you the best representation of the temperature that's happening inside the enclosure if you don't have any other means of measuring it. At this point, if your electrician is amenable to opening the cabinet, you will have an opportunity to see what is inside the enclosure. With a thermal imaging gun or some kind of thermal device, you can take the temperatures inside the cabinet and make an accurate reading of what's happening inside. When the electrician brings you to the cabinet, if he is going to open the cabinet, you need to respect the minimum access area, which is three feet, six inches away from the cabinet which is one meter away. You cannot go in that area, that is restricted. Our flash safety distances can be found in NFPA 70E table 130.4. Steve has the proper personal equipment on so he can be inside that area. Steve, will you please open the door so that I can take a thermal image on the inside of the cabinet? And now I have a record of exactly what's going on inside that cabinet. 